My name is Mary Lou Areño, and welcome back to my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. And I thank you for following my episodes. Uh, I hope you watch uh, my last uh, series on how to apply for a job in the United States. I would like to uh, issue those series to help teachers out there and other professionals who have the intention of uh, working in the United States. So I started with the series on uh, knowing what kind of visa you can use to apply here. And the second series that will come out uh, soon is where to find the job. So I will guide you on some websites on where to find job vacancies. So thank you for following uh, my channel. So for today, I have to take a break and probably uh, release the series three sometimes this weekend because I would like to give time to interview a teacher with me who can help us uh, uh, share something about uh, maintaining positive mental attitude, especially during this time of pandemic. We all know that uh, teachers are stressed because uh, teaching virtually is not a joke. It takes a lot of preparations. And I also understand that even our children are uh, suffering from uh, isolation. They're staying in, in their house in front of the computer. So it's also a challenge for them. So for today, I invited a teacher. His name is uh, teacher Jan Ordonez. He is from the Philippines, but he resides in, in the United States since 2004. And uh, Mr. Ordonez is currently teaching at the San Carlos Unified School District as special education teacher. And um, the family is also here in the US. So uh, Mr. Ordonez uh, graduated the bachelor's of science in education from Pamantasan and Lansod ng Manila, and uh, it's a coincidence that's where I graduated my bachelor's degree also in uh, psychology way back uh, before. So I will not tell the year because you might start counting, but I graduated in the same uh, school as well, the, the Pamantasan and Lansod ng Manila. It's it's a great school, and I am so thankful and. Uh, and for today, uh, I would also uh, would like to give the opportunity to Mr. Jan Ordonez to say something and welcome you to, to my channel. So Mr. Ordonez, welcome to the Teacher's Best Friend channel. Thank you so much, Dr. Areno. And it's always a privilege to be invited. I could still remember two and a half years ago when I host you uh, being the keynote speaker for Unified Arizona. Thank you so much for the inspiration that you have provided uh, your humble start to where you are now, okay? So positive mental attitude, uh, that's not easy to, to maintain. So I remember this morning taking a shower before going to church. And the same goes through with positive mental attitude. The shower that I have taken this morning, it's no longer good tomorrow. It has to be on a daily basis. Every day, uh, you have to keep your positive mental attitude. Either you are in front or not in front of your students. And one thing, not because that you have a positive mental attitude, that everything that you touch turns into gold. Still, bad things happen to people with positive mental attitude, would you say? Yes. Um, and I would like you to give some tips to our viewers on how to maintain a positive mental attitude, especially for teachers out there that are uh, experiencing frustrations due to uh, teaching online and you know they cannot even uh, touch or uh, be with the students to support them. So it, that's really frustrating and, and most of them are beginning to feel uh, hopeless. So, uh, if you can give them some tips on how to maintain a positive attitude. Sure, thank you so much. And with me, I have a book. For your viewers, I'd like to give you a quiz, okay? So if I'm gonna drop this book, all right? Now we all know what 
law is that, right? So it is the law of gravity. Uh, said enough that negative outweighs more than the positive. Okay, we're talking about here about attitude. So basically to start our day, it's very important that we convince ourselves that it's gonna be a great day. So one good practical example that I do is to list down something good or something that I am thankful for, okay? So I also have my notebook here, Dr. Areno, and a couple of journals. So every day on the back of my notebook, I write down one, two, or three things. So if I can ask you, Dr. Areno, can you give me a number from one to 100? Okay, uh, seven. Seven. Oh, that's a good number. Uh, number seven, I am thankful for the gift of friends, especially the teachers that I work with. Wow. Mm, you probably yes. have some friends, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, can you give me one more number? Okay, let's go to 28. 28. Ah. Hmm. I'm thankful for the person who served me in the store because oh, wow. she is a frontline. Won't be having eggs for breakfast. <laughs> All right. So that simple good. stuff like those. Yeah. Yeah. So simple stuff like those could serve uh, your day. Yes. So what you're doing is you are writing uh, one good thing every day that you are thankful for. Wow. Yeah. Uh, lesson that we learn from algebra, like five q plus five q equals. I am Thank so you. good. Right? <laughs> A 5Q plus 5Q <laughs> is what? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you which oh, is, thank you. Know, oh, okay. It's always nice to, to, to start our day being thankful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Th those are good uh, strategies. So that is number one tip that you can do is to write down... Um, things that you are thankful for every day, every little thing yep. we can be thankful for. Every little things, Dr. Reno. And if I may share my screen as well, uh, yes. I'm not the best person to talk, for example, because I am an introvert, uh -huh. born as a single my uh, parent. Okay, uh, you are ready. But before I do, yeah, uh, see if I can share this slide here. I always go back to, all right, to some feedback, okay? Again, just like what I said, if I drop this book, it falls down because negative is so much a burden. But we can always convince ourselves. We can go back to old cards that our friends uh, sent us. So I say, for example, this letter right here was given to me by the principal. So it's a small note on a, on a sticky note, but then again, it could dictate how your day is going to look like because of the positive intention. Okay, does it make sense? Yes. Okay, so that's good. I am learning. So lit if, even little notes that you can give to other people to encourage them to have a good day or positive attitude, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, and it's also very important that uh, we take care of ourselves, Dr. Areno. Uh, one thing on my note here is um, my mentor in Merlin asked me this question. He called me Edward. Edward, do you gas up your, your car? Is that like, yes. We are so lucky that here in Arizona, the price of gas is like, what, $2, right? But if you go to California, it's like $4. $4, yes. But his point. Yeah, his point is, if you can gas up your car with the best gasoline, why can't you gas up your own motivational, your own attitude tank? I said like, man, that makes sense. Because as a teacher, we can't give what we don't have. Uh, so if I'm running low uh, motivation or my attitude tank, then my students would also feel it from the inside and outside. Back to you, doctor. Yeah, so those are good advice. Uh, uh, Mr. Ordonez, uh, thank you, Jan, for sharing those uh, tips.
to maintain positive mental attitude. And the key word there is we need to be thankful also and appreciative to every little things that we experience every day. And my second question is, why is it important for the teachers to maintain positive mental attitude or to maintain a good motivation mm. uh, every day? You know, we are talking about teachers and uh, we know teachers, they wanted their students to be highly motivated. And why is it important for teachers to maintain their high motivation? Well, that's a very good question, Dr. Reno. In this time of uh, technological uh, online learning, who would want to listen to a boring teacher, right? Yeah. So also I have placed here a cooler, for example. All right, you see this cooler right here? Yeah. Uh, Right. In this cooler, I have water, okay? So we got water here. So the point here is with this water is symbolizing our students. If the teacher comes cold or warm, the students can feel it. So our attitude or our motivation is so contagious. We cannot fake it just to make it. We have to really uh, convince ourselves that it's going to be a great day each and every day. You're right. I like that. You know, you cannot give something that you don't have. And I believe if you are a teacher and you are not highly motivated and you're not ready for the day, what do you expect from your students? Isn't it? You cannot fake True. it. If you don't have the motivation, they can see it. They can sense it. That was a very good example. Yeah, and uh, true. Dr. I like the way you you put it in an example of a cooler. You know, like kids will start it to fill in, and uh, they true. serve as your motivator also for the day. So we need to remember that uh, children are also our motivator for the day, even though we are not feeling great we have to make it, uh, you know, uh, not really force, but we need to believe in ourselves that we, we are going to be a great, uh, great day, especially in front of the students, because they can sense it and they can feel it and they can see uh, even to your facial expression, if you are having a good day or if you are having a bad day. That was good. So true. What are uh, some practical ways that you can give to our teachers viewer on how to motivate yourself uh, personally and professionally? Yeah, you thank you for that uh, question. Yeah, well, that comes to mind. Uh, have you ever rented a car, Dr. Reno? Yeah, I think before when we uh, did the long drive and at that time, my car was an old one and I don't feel comfortable driving it long distance. So we we went to get a, a rent a car. Okay, there you go. You would still remember the first car that you ever had in the US, right? Right. <laughs> it's a Chevrolet Astro van. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Is it brand new or uh, is it used? It, it's old. That's the one that is not uh, kind of reliable to take it to long drive because it's used. So okay. if we are going on a long drive, I do rent a car because that okay. Astro van, I am just using it for errands like going to the grocery or uh, driving short distance like that. So I don't want to you know, have that experience that uh, <laughs> you will break your car in the middle of nowhere. So uh, yeah, I did rent a car. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Well, it comes to the principle that uh, I have always taken notes from my mentor, uh, a rental car versus a car that you own, especially if you own a, a brand new car. A rental yeah. car is something, you know, that mm, you will return it. But for a car that you personally own, your motivation to take care of it, it's much higher than the one that you will just return, right? Mm -hmm. So that analogy leads us to how to maintain your 
positive mental attitude or your motivation with as far as students are concerned? Am I just thinking of them as a rental car or am I thinking of them as a car that I own? So if I own them, of course, I'm going to be taking care of them. So my motivation to take them will be higher because I treat them as a family. And you, we have two kids, actually, they're eight and 10 years old. And personally, I invite them to our Zoom meeting every day, although I teach high school, because it comes to mind like, if the lesson is good enough for them, then it will be good for my other students who are Native Americans. But if my lesson is not good for my own children, then it won't serve any purpose for Native Americans. Oh, that, that's a good parallelism. It's like you need to think that it is your own, so you will take care of it. True. Sure. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. Sure. And I like the way you try some of your lessons to your own children. And if they enjoyed your lessons, definitely other kids will enjoy too. Wow. Yeah. I'm learning a lot from your tips, Mr. Ordonez. Thank you for sharing those. So, uh, wow. And uh, I believe you've been doing this uh, professional development. You're sharing a lot of professional development on positive uh, motivation to teachers. And I understand that you already shared, I think, more than 100 uh, professional development sessions uh, since you were in, uh, in the East and here in, uh, in Arizona. And that was very good. And uh, I admire you for doing that, you know, supporting uh, professional development for teachers. And please continue what you're doing and you're making a difference, I know, in, in the lives of uh, other teachers and not only for teachers, but also for students. So thank you for guesting in my channel, The Teacher's Best Friend. Is there any other uh, last word that you can give to our viewers? Yeah, <clears throat> well, in the training that we did last week with uh, 10 teachers, Dr. Reno, I showed them my personal example. Uh, in 2017, came, coming here in Arizona, is it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So back in 2017, uh, I was obese uh, on the borderline, overweight. And I think this is very crucial in this time of uh, pandemic, in this time. Ourselves up or motivated then a lot of my colleagues are complaining, hey, my cholesterol is high, my blood pressure is high since the pandemic started. So like one key motivation that we can all have is to exercise and to give ourselves some self-care. So for all teachers out there, uh, I know it's not easy to do, especially when it's cold, but then again, it should be coming from our motivation. like. If we can take care of ourselves, then we can take care of others. If we cannot take care of our own selves, then why can't we? Uh, why don't we? Why, why do we uh, expect to take care of others as well, physically in all aspects of our lives? Right. Right. Wow, <laughs> that's a very strong motivation, like losing weight and uh, thinking of self care. Sometimes you know we forget about self care. We forget about exercising and. Uh, be conscious about what we're eating and, and the, that's a, a, the good tip that you gave to our viewers and um i'll do that from now i i, I have a treadmill at <laughs> home and uh, because it's cold mm -hmm. i cannot uh, walk in the park i sometimes use my sure. treadmill but because uh you know sometimes sure. it's just here beside me but when i feel lazy i don't do it but yeah from now on I have to remember that we need to exercise. We need to have certain kind of self-care as well. Thank sure. you for, for sure. uh, using and yourself as an example. It, uh, yeah, to close it, Dr. Reno, uh, it can all boil down to two things, your positive motivation and your negative motivation. Positive motivation is if you want to look good and feel good. And of course, if you want to shop for your own like, new clothes, right? But for myself, one negative motivation is losing my father at the age of 58 years old. So he was a farmer 
coming from a farm and then suddenly he felt some chest pain so like every time that i eat a chocolate now is it going to be worth it is that going to be enough motivation for me not to, not to eat it or to resist it so the same success principles that we can have with our health is connected with the motivation principle that we can share with our, our students back to you ma'am oh thank you so we have a uh, positive motivation and negative is like something not good that happened but we can learn from it wow thank you for sharing sure. that so i hope our viewers are learning a lot from this conversation from the tips that you have uh, shared to to us mr ordonez and um I am so grateful for your guesting in the Teacher's Best Friend channel. And I hope to see you again, probably in the future to present something, uh, another topic. But this uh, maintaining positive sure. mental attitude and uh, high motivation, for, especially for us teachers is very important, especially during this time of pandemic where everyone is uh, sure. like, you know, feeling frustrated and hopeless because we are sure. just in our uh, own home and uh, staying home, of course. But uh, I hope all of these, uh, they are temporary and we are very positive that we can all go back to normal. So uh, thank you very much sure. uh, to my viewers. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the conversation. And I'll see you on the next episode, uh, series three, which is uh, I will be providing tips on how to put together your application documents and credentials when you are submitting and applying for a job in the United States. So here is a good example. Mr. Ordonez also uh, once dreamed to become a teacher and work in the United States. And here he is. Is very successful and is sharing those uh, skills and talents that he has to all of us. So thank you. And uh, we need to say uh, bye for now and see you soon. And thank you for watching the Teacher's Best Friend channel. Thank you.